thanks so much for coming. Um, so if this is not the talk you intended to come to, you're in the wrong place. Uh, that's me. I'll try to recreate it. <laughs> <laughs>
see also that um, there's very little in the way of syntax. There's no parentheses, there's no brackets, whatever. Um, that's definitely by design. How many people here have used Logo? Yeah, so you, so you get that it's like uh, designed to be pretty forgiving. Like you, you can uh, type stuff there, you can, you, you can type it all in one paragraph, you can use new lines, you can, um, it, it's pretty readable. Um, and it was the 80s, so <laughs> this is, again, the best we could do for the time. Um, and I had the pleasure of re-implementing Logo for Wolfram Alpha, so it, it has a, a near and dear place in my heart. Um, hmm. Water slide? <laughs> Any, okay. Yeah. You'll get the next one. <laughs> so um, not long after, um, Lego came to one of Seymour Papert's students and was like, hey, we want you to build another one of these um, programming interfaces for learners. But um, this time, it's for something that it's going to be more physical, it's going to connect to a Lego system, and there'll be motors, and it'll be super cool. Um, and they, they did this, which is RoboLab. Um, it's Mitchell Resnick's work, who we all know from scratch later on. Don't get ahead of me. Um, and then Alice is this other um, programming interface on the right that's Randy Posh at um, Carnegie Mellon, uh, who you might know from the last lecture. Uh, this was his work um, and his lab, uh, making sort of more uh, scripting for narrative And if you kind of squint your eyes and put these things together, you may notice it looks a lot like this early version of Scratch. Um, this is how it used to look with like a top-down cat. Um, and now it looks much better because they hired a UI designer, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, and this is a super influential um, idea for a visual programming interface. Um, the, idea of using the sort of Lego conceit of the certain shapes fit with others um, as a way of denoting like data types um, and program flow. Um, that idea is in almost every um, visual programming language. And this is, this is as I said, a creative um, tool. So you can make anything in Scratch, you can make games, you can make Slideshows um, better than this one, and you can make uh, you know music, anything. But uh, that again, like my question in the uh, in the keynote, um, presents us with the intimidation of the empty canvas. There's lots of kids who are like, oh, it, I can do anything. I, I'm paralyzed. I will do nothing. Um, so, uh, as a way of circumventing that problem, we can impose goals and have like a playful system with goals, that's a game. So um, these are some games that involve programming as a game mechanic. This is Lightbot, uh, Code Monkey, uh, Code Spark, uh, Check IO. You can see I divided them into like visual programming and typed um, text programming. And even the two games that I work on one of them is visual programming, and one of them um, uses typing. So, uh, landslide. Thank you. Okay. Yes, <laughs> landslide. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I wanted to ask about all of these programming interfaces is, what do the affordances of those interfaces say about what we value about teaching computer science? Um, so, luckily, we have some choices to choose from, um, because these lovely people <coughs> did some research and came up with these seven categories, which I'm sure you've seen to death by now, today. Like, I, I don't know, I went to at least two presentations that um, referenced um, these seven reasons for teaching computer science. Um, uh, but I, <laughs> that said, the, they, they bear repeating. Um, uh, and uh, you can see that the CS Brawl and uh, UC Irvine took those and divided them into many more 
categories, but I want to take them into divide them into many less categories. So um, basically, it boils down to uh, we think teaching computer science is valuable because either stu students can better serve so society with those skills, um, students can be better served by society. If, you know, the systemic changes um, from their knowledge sort of come to bear, and students can better satisfy their own inner drive so that they can express themselves and have fun. Um, and these things are all interrelated. Obviously, like, you know, if I'm having fun, then, like, I'm probably also better able to serve society. Um, but, uh, you know, all words have to be sort of a bell curve of meaning. <laughs> they have tails that all intermingle. Um, Slip and, slide. Slip and slide, yes, thank you. <laughs> so I, uh, when I uh, thought of do giving this talk, I said to myself and to everyone who asked me um, that I would not um, be judgy at all, like all of these um, interfaces and, and games that go with them uh, just say different things about different priorities that we have. I might be a little judgy in this one because this is Apple Swift, uh, Swift Playgrounds. And um, <laughs> the, the, this is a pressure that they had to deal, deal with as designers is that typing on a, a touch screen sucks. Um, and even like if you know the special <laughs> swipe interface, you can make it suck twice. Um, but uh, that said, Apple makes computers, but that doesn't have nearly the market share of their touch devices. So they were like, let's make a touch device thing that teaches programming. And then they could have stopped there, but they didn't. They said, we also have a proprietary programming language that only works for iOS and Mac OS X. So let's teach that programming language. But that's a text-based programming language. How are we going to do that without typing, which sucks on touch devices? So they had this little compromise, which is, um, I think pretty elegant. Um, you basically present t um, contextually relevant um, lines of code that you could type, and then um, you just press buttons and they get typed automatically. Uh, and CodeMonkey has a similar thing, although you can use regular typing interface. You, there's buttons at the bottom to pre-type things for you, so it's a little more touch friendly. Um, although they're teaching CoffeeScript, which is like a, a confusing language, so why are we teaching CoffeeScript? Um, Mud slide, slide, yes, thank you. <laughs> so I'll also talk about the, um, the affordances in, in Codemancer, because I spent five years of my life on it, I think about it a lot. Um, so, uh, of those seven categories, uh, so Swift Playgrounds clearly emphasizes economic development because they're, they're looking for, like, how can we fill the workforce of Apple developers? Basically, if we, if we shove Swift into the pipeline now, then when kids graduate uh, high school or college, they'll know Swift and we can hire them. Um, and that, that's a thing that we need because our company's growing incredibly fast. Um, Codemancer is driven more, um, I would say, by equity and social justice. Um, I tried to make it as accessible as possible. <coughs> you see that there are, there's no reading here in the uh, programming interface, uh, although that's kind of the case if you don't speak English anyway. Uh, <laughs> you know, all those English letters just mean nothing to you, they're random symbols. Um, but let's say you speak English, um, then kind of like when, if, then, those are English words. Um, here, we've gotten rid of all that. Um, there's no Arabic numerals, uh, and the numbers only go up to five. Um, uh, it's also like narrative-based and, and so on, but in terms of just the programming interface, um, it's tap-tap, so there's no dragging required even, um, which is a, a problem for kids with motor issues. Um, so just trying to make 
programming just about programming. It's not about math, it's not about reading, uh, et cetera, and, and, and make that as accessible as possible. This is um, Human Resource Machine. Um, and you can see it. this is a, a pure entertainment game. I mean, it's, it, it is ve very educational sort of incidentally, but it was designed to go into the normal um, game, uh, games market, so full of puzzle game essentially. Um, but what you're really doing is programming in uh, assembly. Von <laughs> uh, Neumann's. What's that? In von Neumann's architecture. Yeah, in the von Neumann architecture, which is what most of our CPUs are. So like this becomes the CPU, right? This is the input and output buses, and then here's a, um, the registers, the memory registers. Um, but you know, they, they don't tell us that. They tell uh, you're an office worker and you're just trying to move boxes around. Um, so it, it's it, be, because they're going to the straight to the education market. Clearly, they emphasize like fun and self actualization. Um, but they, it, it, I think. It incidentally also values um, computer science as a literacy because you uh, learn about what a CPU does, which I think you know you, a lot of computer science games and programs and activities do kind of gloss over that. They treat programming as a, a high-level formal system, including Codemancer. Um, but th this, I think, is a, a, a thing that people should know more about. So that, um, so this is the end of my slides. <laughs> this is me. Um, and as I suspected, I ran through all my slides really fast because I talk fast when I'm in front of people and I talk slowly when I'm practicing. Uh, so we have some time for questions and I thought I'd just put this up because uh, it's a useful reference. Hey. Have you ever beaten the uh, last level of human resource machine? No, I haven't. They make you do a uh, insertion sort algorithm using a <laughs> Wow, okay, insertion sort. That's really high level considering, yeah. Um, any questions? Yeah. So what would like be, if you're not too familiar with code, what would be like a good indicator that a game is good? Like, how can you tell? Well, yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to, I was, trying to say that they're all good for different things okay. and different people. Um, but like, if, if it's a typing game and it's for um, for touch interfaces, that's going to that's gonna suck. <laughs> um, but so otherwise, like what age you're going for? Yeah, it depends yeah. on what age you're going for mm -hmm. and like, why are you teaching them computer science? Like, uh, is it, you know, because you feel like um, that's going to bring about school reform? Do you think, you know, like all these, are valid reasons, um, and they each suggest different things about the type of game that you should choose. All right, thank you so much. <laughs>